right here. Oh, my shirt was the same color as the background. <laughs> I'm like, what? Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Internet Marketing Unknown Secrets for you today. To learn some good stuff, man. What's up, everybody? <laughs> welcome back. Another fun Phil Friday. Happy uh, Royal Wedding. Yeah, we, uh, we, we considered calling this the Royal Wedding Podcast, but we don't have titles for yeah. our podcast. So well, you can call me Sir. 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 Uh, Sir. Duke Lord Sir Hansen. Duke Lord Sir. <laughs> you just pulled that out. <laughs> Duke Lord Sir Hansen. <laughs> DLS Hansen. <laughs> Barrister Hansen. Uh, so this is officially not the Royal yeah. Wedding Podcast because we don't have titles. You are listening to the 105th Podcast. Man, it, dude, wow. the number, that's awesome. Uh, uh, we're getting about 4,000 downloads a week. We are the most popular SEO yeah, podcast. Yeah. On, wow. On iTunes. It used to be 1,000. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just growing. It's awesome. Um, we are the most popular SEO podcast because of you guys. Um, I am a little disappointed. There's no review. If uh, you're listening to the archive uh, of this... Uh, go out onto iTunes, create an account, post a review. We'll give you some link love. I actually found like a whole slew of of um, reviews that were posted mm-hmm. on our Facebook Places page. We now officially have, I think it's four pages. We have our our page, which is a biz page. For Facebook pages? For, no, just our page. Like okay. our kind of what we think our normal page, about mm-hmm. 120 followers. Uh, we have our Places page. Uh, we have... A company page, which we didn't create, so I think Facebook scraped that <laughs> somewhere. Okay. And uh, and then we have a personal page because we do social, so we need to create Facebook pages, and we didn't want that to be associated with, you know, any one individual. So uh, so there's a company. We have like four. So well, we actually did get a review. We did. Yeah. On <laughs> iTunes. Guy. Oh. Oh yeah. No. Uh, uh, is that iTunes? Yeah, it's not on iTunes. Yeah, because he said he screenshotted it from his iPhone. Oh no, I got that. That's here. Oh. Yeah, no, I got that. We're yeah, okay, well let's just hop right into that. <laughs> um basically guy sent a screenshot of his iPhone, uh, and this is from Israel, and he says we've got five stars, one review. And um I don't That's know I don't know how that works. He didn't I don't know, you know, he reviewed us I think a while back. I'm not sure. Maybe that doesn't show up on, on iTunes here. I don't know. It should because he did it I saw it this week. Okay, well, know, I'll look for it. We'll Thanks, but, guy. But, man, this is a great image for those of you guys who are actually watching. This is pretty cool. There I think that's are. cool that Apple phones can screenshot. I kind of wish Androids could. I don't know why. I'm but, sure they can. Uh, <laughs> I think it's cool. I see that. Uh, special shout-out to Guy and his wife, Mayan. Hey, Nene? good job. Mayan? Good I don't job. Know, man. I'm maybe. That. What's up, Good probably? job, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> actually, did, we got some comment on our Facebook page, which I didn't print, which was, uh, I have a classic Dutch name. Please let Paul try and pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> As always, we want to mention our t- tip from 104 was uh, uh, post tweets on Friday and uh, on Facebook uh, post something on Saturdays mm-hmm. because tweets on Friday are most likely to get re- retweeted and Facebook uh, entries on Saturday are most likely to get liked or passed on or yeah. so shared shared that's what it was that's so. right because we all waste our saturday on facebook on facebook There's, is there is there anything else to do <laughs> no nope. like everyone well if there is something else to do i get on facebook to find, find it. out <laughs> <laughs> um also uh i'm still trying to push people on our facebook page go to questions and by the way our facebook page is facebook.com slash ewebstyle there's a survey and we're trying to figure out where our listeners are I want at least 10% of our Facebook followers to have answered this question. Right now we got five, and we are counting Paul and me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's we not need even to be fair. Seven more. <laughs> <laughs> so we need at least seven more. Just go out there. Basically, we're asking, uh, what business are you in? B2B, B2C, service, product. It's real simple. Get over there and, and, and get that answered out there. Uh, and actually, Aaron Thomas, is he's actually in Houston. I think he works with Logix. Uh, is one of the guys that that um, is kind of not in our regular crew that That's actually up, put it. So thanks, thanks, Aaron. Um, Darren Bowie did uh, post on Facebook. He 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 had some internal turmoil. He he didn't know whether to watch the wedding or our podcast. And uh, thank 
I know you're from London and all, but come on. Thank the powers that be. He's like watching our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) A little bit of news. I thought this was some some like cool staggering stacks. All right. Well, he's watching the podcast because he's still up coming home from a royal wedding party. Party. Yeah. (laughs) Where he could only have champagne. Yeah. Because they don't serve beer. Yeah, they didn't serve beer. I was like, that's kind of odd, you know. Why is beer low class now? Like y'all uppity. Hey, it's maybe it prince. was maybe it was just champagne and shots of tequila. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> get a party started. It's <laughs> I gotta be a, a honest. A lot of Brits are only fun after a few pints. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all great conversationalists. That's one thing. Like you can have the, a Brit can pull a conversation out of nowhere. You can have nothing in common and talk with and a Brit just like forever. That's what's up. It's it's crazy. Um, same was true in Australia. Australia was a blast. All right, so. Apple has actually surpassed Microsoft in for what revenue in iPhone sales? Oh, just revenue, like general revenue. Now get these numbers. Apple had revenue, and I think this is 2010, of 24.67 billion dollars. Okay. Profit 5.99. Right. 24 5.99. Microsoft 16.4 billion revenue. So 24 16. Mm-hmm. Microsoft had 5.23 billion profit. 5.99, 5.23. See, there's a skew in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Microsoft makes 32% profit from the dollars, the revenue dollars that they bring in. Double what Apple was making, right? 24. Okay. Uh, So basically, with 33% less sales, Microsoft almost made as much money. As Google. So they're doing something right, you know, not now, with their software, but they're doing something have, in terms of their accounting. Have you thought about, you know, software is the key. Okay. Because every every iPhone you sell has a hardware cost. Every box of Word oh, yeah. you sell has, has five cents of, yeah, of <laughs> has like zero on it. It, <laughs> it has the, the same development that went into the iPhone, maybe went into the software, okay. and now you're selling boxes of paper and plastic, the CDs, Versus an, an iPhone. That makes sense because they don't. Windows doesn't make like a device, but they I, have devices with they, Windows they software. They have that on device, it. but the majority of their business is software, it, which yeah. doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Another note: Apple passes Nokia in revenue. Now get this: so Apple sold 18.65 million iPhones and passes Nokia in revenue. How many how many phones do you think Nokia sold? Uh, how many phones? Yeah, I don't know. 10 million. 108 million phones. Wait, 108 million phones. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. So Apple sells 18 million and creates more revenue than Nokia selling 108 million phones. Well, you know, not to knock Nokia, but when is the last time you saw a Nokia phone? Yeah, it had a shoulder strap. <laughs> yeah, it's a backpack on. Wow. Um, a, a couple of reviews here. This is on our Facebook Places page. Where uh, Darren Bowie at one point uh, put a mark like, what is all this check-in malarkey? Because oh, yeah. he can't check in. Uh, but we've got Michael C. Jones. Uh, he's actually got a picture of Ralph Macho, the Karate That's Kid, as the Karate Kid, <laughs> not the not the Dancing with the Stars Ralph Macho, because uh, they're totally different. Uh, hey guys, love the podcast. I left a comment on iTunes. I don't even remember that one. Comparing us to Schoolhouse Rock. I think I kind of remember this. What? This is a little old. That's uh, what's up. I'm learning a lot from you and hopefully helping my website, unbeatableappdevelopment.com, uh, get on the first page. And basically what they do is iPhone apps and Droid apps with no programming skills. Don't ask me how that I works. was like, is that possible? I think it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen some of the apps. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Gareth Perkin just tuned in from Auckland, New Zealand. I am just finishing my study in web design and development and need to learn more about SEO. Really happy I found your show. It's a show. I like this. Oh, it's not that's just a it's podcast. It's, it's a, a show. It's a show now. I've, I, uh, if anyone could be so kind as to send me some of the main basics to include SEO wise for starting a new website, we just posted the audio for our 101st podcast. Fresh off the presses. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, we just uh, we just finished our 101st podcast, which we called SEO 101, and go back and listen to that. Also, go back and look at, uh, go to iTunes and find Year in Review. There are two Year in Review podcasts. Yeah, those are uh, great. A 2010 Year in Review and a uh, 2009 Year in Review. And then finally, we got Jason Atwater, new to your SEO podcast. 
Uh, you guys crack me up. Also, lots of good info in an entertaining manner. Thank you, Jason. And there was one last one there. Uh, actually, Terry Crosby dad? is. And then my dad. Was like, <laughs> he did? Yeah, he's like, if you That's need SEO, you need to use these guys. <laughs> I don't know what they do. <laughs> but if you need SEO, you need to my use My dad knows we I do a podcast, but he doesn't actually know what a podcast is. Yeah, I, do. I would I would think that my dad is in the exact same Because he boat. was like, hey, you know, call me when you finish your podcast one day. And I was like. Do you even? Do you, I was like, that was a podcast. I, was like, I don't know, but you do it. And, I was like, all right, Dad. And, I'll take it that. apparently takes your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. That's, that's what's up, Dad. That's, that's what's up. That's cool. I see you are holding the New York Times article. Um, that's an awesome article. We're going to cover that right now, and then we're going to cover a little bit about five new tactics for SEO post panda. Post Google uh, farmer panda. Quick, do a panda noise. <laughs> I got. I got. I've never seen a panda before. Man. I got one. <laughs> so they be grubbing all the time. <laughs> they, they eat bamboo. That can't be. That's got to be noisy, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right, I'd like to see a panda. And what is the farm? I don't get. What? Why does it have two names? Content farm. Oh. And then panda was probably like in the name it. of. It's probably like the name of it. They decided to hey just throw farmer on it because it's about content farms. I think yeah. I think farmer yeah. I made that. That's up. that's and it was it was perfectly acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's talking about farmer panda, farmer panda, what's going on, and uh, you know some people out there say you know I'm losing in the rankings, and uh, so this came out in March, right? They decided to retool their search algorithm. They haven't done this since uh, last year, um, and they removed uh, poor content. That was what it was focused on. And a lot of websites... Like content farms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, content farms kind of got the boot instantly. But then, if your content... If you if you would Chuck likes to call, site-jacked somebody <laughs> for their content, you have duplicate content, or if you're just a terrible content writer, you know, you felt the effects of it. And some people felt the effects even when they had fresh original content, and Google was like, sorry, we're not perfect, get over it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what this talks about is what happened with the algorithm, and... Um, Here's basically what happened with the changes in the search formula. Uh, small businesses are trying to find a way to um, retool their strategy because a lot of people are, are, are dependent on that. And for example, there's a company, um, where was this company in here? Oh, well, here's a, a quick fact. Google says that the modifications in the algorithm impacted 12% of US search, uh, US-based search queries and uh, further changes rolled out or will, earlier this month will be affecting an additional 2%. So from March to April, that's 14% of all U.S. based U.S. based search queries. Uh, I'd assume that everyone else is about to feel the effects of it if they have it. 14% sounds low, right? Yeah, but Except that's like a billion yeah, it's more searches. than a billion searches yeah. that are affected by this uh, this uh, algorithm update. Here's a couple companies. Ergo and Demand uh, saw 40% decline in sales. They went from a 17-person staff to a five-person staff. Uh, another uh, furniture company, One Way Furniture in Melville, New York. Uh, their company, uh, OneWayFurniture.com, sets web traffic from Google dropped as much as 64%. They're an online retailer. <laughs> you know, so that's like you know you've got maybe you got a great storefront and you know how often we'll do road construction mm -hmm. and businesses will close because, because nobody can broke? get foot foot traffic. Yeah, that's like Google like put a construction sign in, in front, front of, of your the, business. The, 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 <laughs> that man and, and be, didn't allow access to get for sixty percent. That's, a great, of that's them. a great analogy. So I mean, this this is damn near shutting some businesses down. Uh, so he lost sixty four percent of his business or his, or his online traffic as an online retailer. Um, and I tell you what, here's what a, couple, a lot of companies are doing. They're saying, um, how can we get around this? Uh, and here's what this guy, One Way Furniture, did. He noticed that his product descriptions were coming directly from the manufacturer. And we've we've talked about this before. Yeah. You you, you, you know, if you're going to do it, you need to rework that content. Yes. Yes. So, and that's exactly what he did. He started paying freelance writers to create original, more detailed descriptions and recently added canonical tags to his website to help search engines to swing, distinguish uh, original from duplicated Content and you were saying something about the canonical this morning that Matt Cut said that yeah I don't well, know. well a couple of things <laughs> usually when you have kind of e-commerce sites there may be multiple ways to get to a product you know just like in WordPress you've got categories and you've got tags so you can actually get you know Chuck and I were just looking at 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 his website at the SEO wrapper 
and looking at how there's actually multiple ways and what that creates is multiple URLs of very similar content. And by using canonical uh, or 301 redirects, you can actually make sure that Google's not seeing those pages of duplicate content. And if anybody happens to link to any one of those versions, uh, you want to make sure that the, you have one version that actually gets the link juice. Yeah. And what Matt Cutts says is if you're going to do either one of these, uh, 301 or canonical, well, what he really said was do 301. If that's not an option, do canonical. And the example he gave was, if say you're on a blog and you don't have access to be able to get, you know, and and you well, let's say you got a free website, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't really have access to a lot of meta tags. First Hang off, on. you shouldn't have one. Thank right? you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, let's say you do just for because you're new and you didn't hear our podcast yeah. prior to setting up your business. Um, and, and you don't have access to put like 301 redirect tags in, uh, in, in, a web, in a free website that's templated and you add information or whatever. Um, you can use a canonical tag, that's something that you can add, and that'll just say, okay, now I'm going to move off of my free website because it sucks and it has, <laughs> has ads, and, and I'm going to redesign a new website. Your website's going to make an awesome website with calls to actions, unique selling propositions, and it actually closed business, and I'm going to put... I've got links to my old uh, old uh, website. I want to make sure that I get that link to use. So you put a canonical tag there saying, hey, I've got the similar content here and here, but give all the credit over there. That's Ignore this one, go that one. Um, so that's perfect. Great that's example. You know, That's what Matt Cutts said. I, I told the guy uh, the other day, man, like you should be following Matt Cutts on Twitter. Bar yeah. none. Like, yeah. That's an absolute must. Because that's people say I, you want to hear from the horse's mouth. He is the horse's. He's the, he's horse. the horse and has a mouth. Or he's at least a molar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely want to follow that. Um, so one point I want to make about this this article that I think is really important. One of the things that we do here in terms of internet marketing is not just SEO. It's not just pay per click. It's not just social, it's all of them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Google is going to make changes. And sometimes maybe they make mistakes and they'll retract them. But if it takes them a month to figure out that they've made a mistake and are, you know, are damaging more than 12 or 14% and then they got to retract, you know, if your business is entirely focused on just organic uh, mm -hmm. traffic and they mess with that, which they can, there's no legal liability for them to mess with that. Yeah. I mean, there is from the sense that they could get sued and have to defend themselves, but they're not. you're not going to win. Nobody's going to win. Thank you. You're not going to Google. So, um, so you want to have a broad balance. We don't discourage anyone from doing radio ads, from doing TV ads, from doing billboards, if it's appropriate for their business. We believe that your marketing strategy needs to be, uh, it's kind of like everyone knows if I'm investing, I need to diversify. Yeah. If you're marketing, you need to diversify also. And we think in terms of internet marketing, you can diversify well enough if you're just, if you do SEO, uh, pay-per-click, because pay-per-click's not going to go away, yeah. whatever the algorithm they change. Um, and then the, the natural listings will go away before the paid listings exactly. will go away. Exactly. Paid and listings so make their may money. eventually uh, swamp everything else. Yeah. Um, so to kind of go off what you said, you, you know, you have to think of a new, you have to have a comprehensive strategy. And what this article starts, towards the end they start talking about, well, what are people doing? How are they, or what it forced these guys to do is to say, hey, I rely on Google way too much. What else can I do? And a couple guys, uh, they said, uh, rather than they launched email marketing campaigns to pass customers, uh, they're getting people to post product reviews, and which was a, a genius idea because we also I read with the Farmer Panda update, they're placing more weight on user-generated content. So you bought a, 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 a Think Toshiba laptop, and now By I can. By the go, way, don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now I go on there and I say I bought this piece of junk. Don't buy this piece buy of junk to see the laptop. It has and, a neat little pen. Right yeah. Now. And so, you know, that that's user-generated content. Google likes that kind of stuff. By the way, this uh, thing that came off the printer that was hot off the presses, uh, after listening, listening to 100 podcasts, I feel like I know you, I submitted an iTunes review and a five-star ranking like the Facebook page. Uh, please let Paul pronounce my name because it is typical Dutch <laughs> name, so I'm expecting some trouble. <laughs> Here we see. go. Juiced. Juiced. Cock. <laughs> I was like, no, man. 
Your last name is not cock. I think you got that bast- ba- backwards. bastard. Bastard. <laughs> I think you got that backwards. I think that's a, a cock joust. Cock <laughs> joust. <laughs> cock. <laughs> it was like it's either cock or coke or coke. Co coke. Cocaine. Co- <laughs> There, he's calling to tell us how to, how to pronounce it right now. I know it's not cock, man. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Uh, let's let's bring out Charles and get his opinion on the cock joust. <laughs> Just to bring him out in the awkward moment of the podcast. <laughs> wow. I never said K-O-K-K-E. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you on that one. That Charles, I sent the print. <laughs> Get Paul to screw up right there. First, we're happy made it. Oh, <laughs> Mine is a terrible thing to wait early in the morning. Charles forgot he worked here. <laughs> the morning synaptic gaps did not have the appropriate amount of caffeine. Well, just you know, it just the elevator was not going all the way. Up. So it took Facebook to remind him. Oh, it's like, oh, I worked there. That's what's up. <laughs> you should probably go. I feel like there's something this morning. I'm missing. There's something <laughs> going on. Why don't I seem busy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, we're glad you make it. Uh, did you want to give an attempt on the name, or are you just no? Leave? Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that alone. Man. <laughs> Juice, appreciate, Juice. The, appreciate the review. Thanks for tuning That's in. What's up. I hope you're watching now. That's what's up. You know, uh, hit me up on my I'm monitoring Twitter. So if you got questions, let me know. Your nickname will be Cock Juice. <laughs> Ah, uh, do not invite your children to this podcast. podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's, what we're gonna, that's what I'm going to call which, you in the office. Which man. is, of course, what you get when you squeeze a rooster. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. That's what's up. But hey, man, hit us up. Send us a video. Pronounce your name, because I actually would like to know. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh man, I had another thought. Today's podcast is sponsored by Porn. Yeah, yeah it's squeezing the rooster like Project Live <laughs> Rooster Juice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. you, so you, you heard us, and I know you read that New York Times article. Yeah, I'm uh, not gonna say that. <laughs> anything to add? Anything uh, uh, to what we said? Um, no, but I was listening. I did read the article, and I think that it's just imperative that you make sure you, like you said, diversify. If your marketing is strictly based on natural listings, then you leave your you leave your company, you know, <laughs> up to them. Yeah. Pretty much, and then apparently they're making changes, and so you know, um, take advantage of other opportunities, not just natural, but pay per click. Remarketing, social, um, and you know, and I'm sure print media loved this. I'm sure if people that newspapers, oh yeah, and yellow pages are running out telling their people, oh, Look, they're, you could be screwed tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. you'll be screwed tomorrow. That's why you need to buy a full page ad in the New York Times. <laughs> Not. <Yeah. laughs> Gosh. Um, and we're actually using we are actually using this article because we had to have a heart to heart with one of our clients who was. It went out and duplicated a website and took the content we created and you know anyway yeah anyway call me in a minute yeah it's really <laughs> this article from Search Engine Land which apparently Dean sent but I found it first Dean <laughs> shout out to Dean man he just sent us a direct message man that's we appreciate up. your support too I probably didn't talking. find it first him and Darren sure. watching right now oh that's what's oh, yeah. cool yeah. man Darren it's like four in the morning over there no, was, well no the wedding was at four and that was like <laughs> Eight, four uh, hours ago. Oh, that's what's up. So it's time to get up. Get to work, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called Five New Tactics for SEO Post Panda. Got it from Search Engine Land. If you don't read Search Engine Land, yeah, shout out to Danny, problem? Danny Sullivan, all those guys. At Search yeah, it's a great. Uh, I, I get a ton of stuff from Search Engine Land. It's awesome. You should be following them on Twitter, Facebook, and subscribing to their newsletter. So, which now that we've talked about uh, Panda, Farmer Panda, everybody knows. It, it changes the way they, they uh, index stuff, and a lot of people suffer from it. What to do now that it's here? And an article starts about caffeine, and we did a couple podcasts on caffeine. I love this image. This is an image for anybody out there watching. It's an image of the difference between pre- and post-caffeine, and <laughs> basically it's got, like, organized blocks and then, like, a mass chaos universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And apparently the, their statement is, caffeine lets us index web pages on 
an enormous universal scale. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's from Kerry Grimes at Google. So. And that, and that was really caffeine was not a a an algorithm change. It was more of an indexing change. But it was the it was the change of 2010. Uh, and it seems like Goop Farmer Panda is the change of 2011. So what it allows them to do is just index uh, content at an enormous rate. It's like, I think he said it's hundreds of thousands. Well, remember we were watching the in. Matt Cutts video where he said, you know, in order to have an instant uh, snapshot of the web, you can't really do that. Mm-hmm. They have the power oh, yeah. to do it, but they would shut down the internet. They would shut down the internet if they were to try and take a snap, an instant snapshot. But, you know, the logic of that is okay. We're constantly adding articles to the web. Like I think the number is insane. Whatever it is, millions mm-hmm. of articles an hour, and it, you know. It, at any given moment, the Google snapshot is actually wrong. In fact, mm-hmm. every moment it's mm-hmm. wrong because it doesn't have the most recent article that was yeah. pasted. And it's like, and our goal is actually not to grab that because uh, it would take down the, yeah, the internet. Yeah, take down the internet. So Google has the power to take down the internet. So what caffeine Which is did, not surprising. Yeah, yeah. no. Man. If somebody could do it, he would Google be there. could do it. Yeah. Uh, caffeine, I thought this was a great uh, line. It says, caffeine gave them a, the ability to index hundreds of thousands of gigabytes a day. Actually, that was hundreds of millions. No, that's what, it takes 100 million gigabytes of storage. Oh, my uh, bad. <laughs> but it, it allows them to index 100,000 gig, over 100,000 gigs a day. And that's, so that's, you're looking at every 10 days, over you know, a million plus gigs. So that's... 100 million gigabytes of storage. So a year, a year ago, I mean, let me see. Uh, a year from today, that that's number will be choice, a you know? billion. Yeah, I, I feel like doing like a beaver saying, that's not much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, so what, by the way, did you hear Beavis and Butthead is probably okay. coming back? Really? Yeah, yeah. I, heard, I heard about that. Gosh. What? <laughs> <we're laughing>. <laughs> <laughs> I like the TP for your bunghole. <laughs> that one when he puts his thing over Lake his head. Lake Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need TP for my bunghole. <laughs> Uh, so what that really does is it, uh, it focuses on Didn't quality. Didn't you to sound just like yeah. it. <laughs> I was kind of going on the back of my head. Like, that's that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. I'm actually the voice of one of them. Yeah. I don't even vocal. know which one sounds like. Uh, what Panda does is it focuses on um, quality, content quality, authority, trust. And we talked about trust in a couple podcasts ago. Credibility and it also incorporates user signals. So that's what Panda does. And then it goes on and says, Well, what are five things you could do? It gives five tactics you can use post Panda. Um, first, it says, Decide what URLs are canonical and create strong signals. And I, I, I'm still grasping, like, his Chris's job is the canonical. I'm like, yeah, I don't, know. Yes. I don't, I don't do that. So yeah, uh, can you hold, please? Thanks. Chris, <laughs> canonical <laughs> nine one. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, this is this is talking about d- determine which of your URLs is the one that you want to present as as the as the one that the Google should be indexed. Yeah. yeah, and and so it's saying make sure you have those. I don't know exactly what they mean by create strong signals, other than making sure that you have canonical tags on. The non-target pages, um, they don't mention 301s. I, I got I to, gotta, you know, the search engine line is so well respected, it does feel a little good when you catch them on something. Mm-hmm. Um, 301, from what Matt Cutt said, is actually significantly more important, and you should actually focus on that. When you don't have that as an option, then you should do relative canonical. Uh, the other strong tags are robot exclusions, so you can actually exclude the non-authoritative page, like uh, Charles mentioned. Um, and uh, you know, make sure that your link structure is geared towards that. So, yeah. um, I think the sitemaps are key here. You he yeah. did mention XML sitemaps. You know, on that sitemap, that's pretty much a page where all of these links are. And so, on that page, with the links with the correct domain name <laughs> that you want to go with, the correct URL rather that you want to go with, yeah, yeah, also you know helps that. Yep. Uh, second thing it says: decide which URLs are most valuable and ensure that they are indexed and well optimized. And another, just kind of go back to, well, I, I kind of felt like the, the what Panda's doing is it's saying, rather than trying to index everything, which it, you know, it is going to do, make sure that your most valuable content is being indexed first. You know, say if you have a thousand pages on your website, don't focus so much on making sure that you get all thousand pages in, you know, well, you want all thousand pages in, but you want to make sure that 
the top 10, 15 percent that people go to are indexed. They are optimized. Yeah, easy to crawl. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, because that's what Panda's kind of focusing on is the the important stuff, the good content. It seems like Panda's making going to force you to uh, shift your efforts towards link sculpting. Yeah. yeah. Like all of this is mm-hmm. with regards to navigation and how people get through the site, which pages are most important. And so basically, you don't want to have all your link juice going to uh, a page where no conversion can happen. At. You know, you yeah. want you want your you link juice to go to a page where the content's there, the CTA is there, and where the conversion will likely happen. That's yeah. the page you want indexed. And that kind of boils down to the, you know, we always say keyword, keyword, keyword. Mm-hmm. What are the keywords you want to target and, and are going to be most valuable to you and your business? Create a page for those. Make sure that page has the CTAs, the unique selling propositions, and then work on sculpting and creating value for that page. Uh, third, it says remove any extraneous overhead, duplicate, low value, and unnecessary URLs from the index. I feel like that's kind of link sculpting. Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to say. What was interesting about over. this, when we were looking at my site, right, and we were using the tool, and so I, w- I want to see if all 81, right, right. <laughs> of those URLs were actually were indexed. in the index. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and if, if so, then. I don't know Start if that's good or bad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because <clears throat> if they're in the index, great, right? Uh, so, yeah, WordPress, you might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, might have to get a, but uh, thankfully, it's WordPress. You might just need to get a plug in. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I like to say is duplicate content. I know there's some dude sitting out there that's like, well, I've seen duplicate content. Yeah. And it's ranks. Well, so have we. And it sucks. And but the <laughs> New York Times article has seen duplicate content and it's disappeared. Yeah. That's the whole the whole point. You know, there Google doesn't catch everybody. Not not up front. Yeah. Not on the first pass. But they they're <laughs> gonna they're gonna catch if you are borrowing content, if you're an online retailer and you borrow content from the manufacturer, if you steal content, if you cite Jack, you know, you're gonna get caught at some point in time. So just don't do it. And we saw it this week or last week, somebody had you know jacked some content from one of our clients, and I was like, yeah, that's weak. That's yeah. And it ranked pretty well for it, which was yeah, I a, wrote that content. Yeah, which is a signal that the content was awesome because the con- the original content was on the first page of Google, and this guy was like first it's or second. Saying, yeah. And it, you know his, his site had, couldn't have been up more than a couple months old, so it does that suck. Jack content. Yeah, yeah, I mean it, this was like that classic means it was jacket. great content. Yeah. By the way, I, that's what I thought. I was like, man, that's a sign of good content because this guy got ranked very quickly with your content. So, but don't do it. You know, that's whack. That's side jack. Uh, number four, build ex- it build internal links to canonical high value URLs from authority pages, strong models rank. Unique referring domains. I think that means. Links, I think it's supposed to be right. inbound links, <laughs> right? High value URLs from yeah, yeah. authoritative pages. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you know that's inbound linking mm-hmm. to make sure that you've got high value pages that are linking into you. Um, and then if you have any high, I'd say even if you have internal, if you have some high value pages, make sure that those go to other high value pages. And I'll give you a tip. Without what I'm gonna start doing, and I was working on this in my presentation. Um, for your internal pages, when you're cross-linking, right, use um, absolute links instead of relative. So right. that way, if somebody does cite Jack and they do scrape your content and they happen to do a poor job at it, mm-hmm. if they repost it, you'll have links back to your oh, site. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's okay, good explain idea. absolute links. Okay, absolute links uh, basically are a link that contains the entire... They're, they're not relative. Yeah, they're not rich. <laughs> it, 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 it has the entire URL. You know, www.e-webstyle.com slash, you know, pay-per-click marketing dot PHP, right? And then you have um, the relative link would simply be slash PHP marketing. And since it's on the same uh, server, in the same, the directory. Browser, same directory, the browser knows that, that that page is hosted with the site. The absolute link, by putting the entire link the entire URL in that link. If somebody copies it and pastes it, then you know the we'll, link is still the link is still yeah. coming back to the site. I always kind of wondered how that works. I was yeah. like, the whole link is not the whole web address is not there. Most yeah, of the how time. does it? Yeah, how does it yeah. know? That's what's up. <laughs> Learn something every day. And then build build. So the last one is uh, build high quality external links via social media efforts. 
<laughs> and again, that's external coming in. Going to the site. Um, one of the things that's not mentioned here, and I actually was looking at at our website, our homepage doesn't have any outbound links, and I think we probably should add something like to a search engine land or whatever, because uh, you know, again, it's about providing a good experience to the Google user, which is what we do as SEOers. Um, you know, if if somebody's looking at our page for internal for content, well, outbound would well, well, okay. I mean, we do link out, but we don't link out to like nobody else. Right, right. Yeah, it links to, it's got internal pages. I think there is some value into, um, you know, again, if you're looking for information about SEO, you, you, even if you go to search engine land, that's not where you're going to stop. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're subscribed to multiple RSSs, so yeah. if search, search engine, engine land, land is sharing Moz, links with SEO Moz, SEO journal, I mean, I'm subscribed to yeah. <laughs> That's a great experience for the Google user, and so we're, we'll be incorporating some of that because I think Google gives, if they don't, they really should give value to, hey, these guys, you know, it's, it's uh, this kind of gets all philosophical, but about abundance. Look, we're going to get lots of customers to our pages, mm -hmm. and if we send them to more informative sites, actually, we're going to have a better customer when they walk yeah. in the door. Yeah. Uh, and more that's informed. Uh, yeah. You know, the more, more informed, the uh, informed customer is a, is a great customer. And to kind of I read something uh, a while back, and it was about linking and how PageRank is created. And I don't know, this is kind of related, but you know, linking said so we, we send a link to Search Engine Land. You know, that is a very high uh, PR site. It's a, a high trust rank. That should help our our page, our page yeah. rank. And what I was reading was I was kind of going through the, the original page rank algorithm, and it was saying that. Google calculates your page rank based on who you link to, not who links to you. And I was like, okay, I didn't know yeah. that. But yeah. then, then it said, here's what it said. Google recognizes that. This was not a Google document. It was somebody that was interpreting the Google algorithm. They were saying Google recognizes that you don't have control over who links to you. So link farms can link to you all day. Uh, and you can't control that. And they were saying, well, why would Google penalize you for that? But then I was like, I agree with that. I agree with that. In theory, in theory, um, but you can't just okay. But my, here's my thing. Okay, I'll, let me build a page, and I'm gonna link to Ford.com, IBM.com, Google.com, Yahoo.com, and from that same reasoning, I should have the highest page rank possible. Well, I think what you're what you're saying is absolutely true on the negative side. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I link to bad websites, mm -hmm. I have control over that. Yes. And that should penalize me. Yes. If I link to great websites, I just won't get that penalty, right? Because otherwise, yeah. like you said, okay. you could just put up. Yeah, any, I would link to all PR nine sites. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. MSN, whatever. Yeah. Um, and the 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 converse is true. Having a whole lot of bad inbound links, they don't penalize you because mm -hmm. you may not have control over mm -hmm. that. Um, but having one good inbound link does count. It does, so the yeah. it's it's a negative. It's, it's like very a reverse relationship. To, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it makes sense for the negative side. It doesn't make sense for the positive because you know it can't. What what it says is it can hurt you. Outbound links to bad sites can hurt you. Inbound links from bad sites can't. Um, inbound links from great sites can help you. Outbound links to great side, great sites won't help you. Yeah. They won't hurt you like if you were you know sending people to whatever. Yeah. To, rooster to, juice. To rooster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's uh, up. I got Blake's there for you. All right. I was looking over there. Oh, whoa, you, 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 you were just yeah. wow. Blink, blink, blink. Check this out. Uh, actually, two blank stairs. One on our new client. Dude came in. A uh, great client. Going to put his business out yet. But, dude's using the AOL email address. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Man, really? Uh, yeah. First business? Yeah, he was like, man, just email me here, blah, 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 at AOL.com. And I was like, really? We even had to I, sign into his account to get a phone number for it, for him yeah. to call his business account. Personal AOL email address is like suspect. Like, just think an AOL phone? Like, I know what to do. We pulled it up, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Where's the mail link? Yeah. <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? Dude, and then it said, you, you got, got mail. mail. And we both started laughing. That still happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. <laughs> Took me all the way back to 95. Wow. Oh, second blank stare was, um, um, yeah, so Yahoo sold delicious to right. the guys who, um, who, who founded YouTube. Okay. But yeah. the, the corny thing about it, 
is any other transaction of that size or nature, you can usually find how much the sale was for, I was what say, happened. How much? It's not posted nowhere. Wow. It leads me to believe that there's probably no value in dealing with it. For $47.95. But then I was like, well, Delicious still had a large user base. Yeah. Right? A lot of people there's, use there's I still a lot of value it. there. And yeah. so um, either it sold for really, really cheap or a whole bunch of money. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah. So um, um, I, think, I think you should stop using Yahoo. Right, because they're selling off all the stuff that's going to have value, and then they're going to come out. Like, I understand that, like, they are decided not to do search. Actually, I didn't understand that, but I was like, if you're not going to do search, you're going to have to do a Something bunch of else other stuff. Something better. Yeah, because you started as a search company, so now... And then they yeah. sold their, their free website. Uh, I can't even remember what that was called. Um, Hot something, maybe. Uh, something. And uh, if they yeah. sold that, and they, actually, they didn't sell it. They just closed yeah, it down. They just stopped. Oh, yeah. They still had a lot of value. Anyway. Is that Geo Cities? That's what Geo City, yeah. Geo City, that's close to I think they're about to get rid of Flickr. Um, wow. Uh, Delicious is gone. In what, 10 years? It probably won't be it's a like It's like a fire sale. Years. I'm <laughs> thinking more like you know, <laughs> next week. It's a yeah, fire sale. Like, yeah, yeah that's what it is. A fire <laughs> clearance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Google changes, like Google changes the, the doodle on Yahoo. It's just going to be clearance. Clearance. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna put my bid in for everything. Football. <laughs> everything must go. That's pro- man, that's probably one of the things that they're making money off of is fantasy football. It's and free t- until and it's until, free. Uh, ads, until okay. Facebook, because I still think next they're year by it. 2012, I think Facebook oh, will have fantasy. Yeah. 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 All right. Well. All right. This has been podcast number 105. Again, you can stalk us at facebook.com slash ewebstyle, twitter.com slash ewebstyle. Send us an email at podcast at e-webstyle.com. We still have a free website analysis. Go to our website uh, right on, I think, every page, including the blog pages. You've actually got a, a short little form that you can fill out. Um, did I leave that? We do websites. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take this short promo break. Uh, spin of those. Um, submit them now. Man, we're probably going to start doing them video. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing video, and that way you can log on and watch us review your site live. So Yeah, so we're going to actually move the camera over. Uh, we're going to have a website up. We're actually going to uh, critique that website from, uh, I would say, SEO perspective. Mm-hmm. We usually do every perspective. Yeah, yeah marketing. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're going to actually create another podcast stream. And uh, so... Yeah, stay, start, tuned. Get, stay tuned because we'll, we'll get three or four of those put up, put together and then we'll start um, uh, making that available to you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll send the video uh, so fill out a form we'll uh, you get you included in our <coughs> website internet marketing analysis um, that's it right it's our website the title earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. we do oh, we do websites <laughs> yeah. those of you don't know we do websites and, and our web address is ewebstyle.com. Do we ever actually say that? Well, you can watch this podcast live at 9.15-ish Central Standard Time on Friday mornings. Uh, all you need to do is go to e-webstyle.com slash podcast. Mm. No, SEO podcast. So ewebstyle.com slash SEO podcast. That'll take you to a page that it, it, it you can actually... Some people are probably looking at it right now on that page. Yeah. Uh, if we're not broadcasting, there's actually a link under uh, the video component to our archive, so you can actually go pull up an old podcast. If if you really want to see, you know what uh, what the iPhone looks like in Israel when you're looking at the SEO podcast. So yeah. this has been podcast 105. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. Paul Hanson, Charles Lewis. Bye bye for now.